All right, have a seat up on a lift. Ha have some props nearby, have a chair. You can use any chair. I, I have a couple blocks. You can have one block if you have it or a stack of books or something else that can give you some height. Sitting on a few blankets here. Blankets work, towels work, blocks work too. And uh, have a strap, you can use a scarf. Belt, something similar. Cross your legs at the center of your shins. Take your feet beneath your knees. If, uh, if there's tension in sitting, I recommend a higher height so that you can find a sense of ease today. If you're, if you're too low, there tends to be a gripping in the inner thighs. And when there's a gripping in the inner thighs, we tend to slouch forward. But we can find that releasing where the legs release downward, the torso automatically begins to lift upward. So that there's, there's space, there's an openness. You can rest your hands gently on your thighs. Have your upper arms in line with your side ribs, elbows bent. Before making all the adjustments, changes, seeking to see differences, seeking to witness effects, first we have to observe how can you notice the difference? How can you notice the changes? How can you notice the effects when you haven't done the initial observation? So observe the body, observe the quality of the breath, observe the quality of the mind. And then give yourself permission to drop your awareness into the body. It doesn't mean the thoughts won't be there. They'll still come. You can, and it's helpful, you can move the thoughts to the back bottom part of your brain. And they'll still run around there. It's just that they're, they're a little quieter. So move the thoughts to the back bottom part of the brain. Drop your awareness into the body. Find the even balance of the sit bones. Find the releasing lengthening of the inner thighs, the whole inner groin from the lower abdomen to the inner knees, from the inner knees to the lower abdomen. Find that lengthening, opening. The flesh of the inner thighs flows down from the front of the leg towards the back of the leg. And draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact your hips together. And then pause here to notice the effects. There are more changes that we're going to go through, more adjustments, but notice the effects so far on the body, on the breath, on the mind. Now maintain the experience you've created in your legs, <clears throat> which of course affected the torso, but the actions were, were in the leg area. Take the top of the buttocks down towards the floor, bring your front bottom ribs towards the back body. Don't lean your shoulders forward or back to do that. And as you take the top of the buttocks down, as you bring your front bottom ribs towards the back body, find a lengthening from the outer hips up towards the armpits without lifting the shoulders up. That's different. But can you actually lengthen in the sides of the torso?
And again, pausing to witness, to notice the effects of the body, the breath, and the mind. Allow your shoulders to release down away from the sides of your neck. Let gravity help you. You don't have to do all the work. You have gravity helping you. If you're lifting your shoulders up, you're actually resisting gravity. So allow gravity to help you. Lengthening through the torso, that is resisting gravity. Shoulders, let gravity help you. And find a lengthening in what we sometimes call the groins of the arms from your armpits to your elbows, lengthen. So there's a lengthening in the groins of the legs, there's a lengthening in the groins of the arms. And again, pausing to witness the body. The breath. The mind. And when you witness the breath, to be clear, it, it's not just the, the amount of breath. It's not just the length of the breath. Amount and length are different. Uh, you can take in a lot of air in a short amount of time. Take a small amount of air in a long amount of time. But it's not just those. It's the texture. It's where does the breath touch and where does it get stuck too? Without judgment, there are places where it's stuck. There are places it's not touching right now. We're witnessing. Now allowing gravity to still take your shoulders down, allowing gravity to help with the lengthening from the inner armpits to the elbows. Allow your elbows to continue to draw down as you bring your palms together at your heart. Touch your palms evenly. Close your eyelids from top to bottom and draw your eyes back and down to gaze at the seat of your heart. Allow your face to completely let go, to become still. And again, pause to notice body, the breath, the mind. Now, if you really observe the breath, you'll notice, for most of us anyway, that there are some places where it doesn't quite touch, where it either goes around or gets stuck. And those places on our back or, or the front, So without forcing a breath, I'm not asking you to force anything now, but as you witness the breath, can you seek to open up those spaces where the breath is stuck to allow the breath in? So you're not forcing the breath into the places. There's a practice of that too, that can be done delicately to be clear, but Right now, I want you to see if you can actually open up some of those blocked spaces so that the breath can flow there. And you may not open up 100% right now. I am certainly not. Or perhaps there's a little bit more space for the breath to flow. And then delicately adjust the, the movement of the breath, again, without forcing a deep breath, but, but delicately adjust the movement so that it is equally touching the front body, the back body, and the side bodies. And 
in a way that a, a balloon, when a balloon expands, it expands evenly on all sides. And as you do this, notice the effects on the body and the mind. Adjust in the body, change the breath, change the mind. Adjusting the breath changes the body and the mind. And of course, we're not doing that right now, but if you want to change the mind, that would also affect the body and the breath. They interact with each other. Let's chant the syllable OM three times together, exhaling completely, deep inhalation. Lifting your sternum towards the ceiling, lower your chin towards your heart. And take a moment to pause here and observe the effects of the ohms on the body, the breath, the mind. Release your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. Do your eyes close, raise your head. Gently allow your eyes to open. Welcome to those who have joined us since we started. Straighten your legs and to the edge of your left. Have your have your strap with within arm's reach. So take your strap, put it by your side. And again, for those that weren't here at the very beginning, you can have a strap. You can also have a scarf or a belt or anything like that. Hands by your hips, dandasana, elbows bent. Feet together. If the feet don't go together, uh, then certainly have them apart. That's fine. You can also, if your feet don't go together, it can be nice. It's not essential but it can be nice. You can take a block between your feet and then it, it just gives them something to be next to. So that can be kind of nice. Because it stops your feet from falling apart, right? Otherwise, I don't know, can you see that? I don't even know where my feet are on the screen, right? You don't want your legs to fall apart like that. Press the thigh bones down. See that you're not leaning back. So shoulders are above the hips. If you feel like you're leaning back or scooping in the lower back, then, then you may need just a higher lift. Take another blanket or bath towel, pillow, bolster, anything. Give yourself some more height. Lengthen from the inner thigh out through the inner knee. From the inner knee, extend through the inner heel, through the ball of the toe. So there's a long lengthening of that inner leg. And from the upper inner thighs, also draw back towards the lower abdomen. 
to send the flesh of the inner thighs down and draw from the outer knees to the outer hips as you compact your hips together. And again, can you witness the effects that those actions have on the body, on the breath, on the mind? Now maintaining that, I don't care if the arms get straight, but use the arms to help the lengthen. You can push into, into your lift and begin to lengthen the arms so that there's a lengthening of the, si of the side ribs. If you force your front ribs forward, stop. If you lift your shoulders, stop. Keep the front ribs moving towards the back body, take the top of the buttocks down. And notice if as you move to your arms and torso, if you begin a gripping in the inner thighs and continue a lengthening in the inner thighs while compacting your hips together. And as you've now lengthened your torso, notice any changes to the body, more space, right? That, that, that's often an easier one, but then to the breath. What did that more space do to the breath? What did that more space do to the mind? And as you're here, after observing, not before observing, after observing, can you gently allow the breath to touch the front, back, sides of the body equally? Now let your right leg fall out to the side. Take hold of the inside of the knee and move the leg out to the side, the knee out to the side. And then the other leg, let the leg fall out to the side first, take hold of the inside of the knee and move that leg out to the side. And then you can take hold of your feet ankles and take the feet together. Take a strap underneath your feet. And, and hold down, don't, don't do, not, not this one here where the arms are, are all bent, but uh, you know, if, if we were on the floor, we would, take our, our hands underneath the feet. But because we have a lift, and you know, if you really don't need a lift for this, you don't have to have one, but many of us are tight in the hip, tight in the groins, and the knees tend to rise. So, so the lift helps the opening of the groins, the hips. And since we now know with the lift, we no longer can get our hands underneath the feet without leaning forward, we have the strap to lengthen our arms. But the arms are still straight or straightish. I'm not saying you have to lock the elbows or anything, but straight arms. And if you roll the upper arms out, that creates more space for the side ribs. When you roll the upper arms out, there's also a tendency to push the front bottom ribs forward. So take the front bottom ribs back and the top of the buttocks down. And now press your heels. Lengthen from the inner thighs to the inner knees. Move the knees away from each other. Don't seek down, but seek away from each other. Seek the right knee moving to the right, the left knee moving to the left. And in those actions, you may find that they, they tend to, to begin the journey downward. But we're looking for space, not that forcing downward. The downward is the results of, of space opening. Now, as you lengthen from the inner thighs to the inner knees, also lengthen from the upper inner thighs towards the abdomen. And draw from the outer knees to the outer hips. For me personally, I find that when I, when I take that, that drawing back towards the body from the inner and outer legs, I can do them alone, I feel it. And when I do them together, I feel it more. When I, when I have the drawing in, that's when the knees really begin to go out more. That's when the opening takes place. Lift up through the side ribs. Let the breath touch front, back, sides of your body. And take hold of the strap with your left hand. Both sides. So, so now you can have a little bend in the elbow because you're going to hold a, above, your, um, above your feet. So there'll be a slight bend. Take your right hand behind you. Look forward. 
Now, as soon as I did that, I noticed I lost the length that I had just created in the inner thighs. I lost the grip into the out, outer knees to the outer hips. So before I turn, I want to get that back. So lengthen in the inner thighs. Draw the outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips together. Then using that back arm, really try and lift up through those side ribs and spine. On your exhalation, bend the elbows and turn. You can still look forward, turn the torso, lead with your head, lead with your heart. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turn. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turn. Wrap the ribs around. And allow the breath to touch the front back sides of the body. It's different in a twist. So don't force it, but observe the breath. I should have had you observe first. How does the breath flow when you're in a twist? And then can you seek front back sides of the body? Maintain the lift, exhale, come to center. Take hold with your right hand, left hand goes behind you, head is forward. Roll the upper arms out, draw the shoulders down. Re-lengthen the inner groins, the inner thighs, draw from the outer knees to the outer hips. Inhale, lifting up through the spine, the side ribs. Exhale, bend the elbows, the elbows move away from each other, turn. Don't lead with the head, lead with the heart. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Watch the ribs puffing forward. Wrap the ribs around. And then observe the breath. Notice what the breath is doing. Notice changes to the body, effects on the body, breath and mind. And then see if you can gently, kindly, just allow the breath. You have to open up the space and allow the breath to touch the front, back sides of the body. Maintain the lift. On your exhalation, come to center. Hold both sides of the strap. Take your hands on the outside of your knees, push your legs together, hold behind one knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the leg, then the other, drag the heel, straighten the leg, hands by your hips, Dandasana. You're going to separate your feet apart now, Upavista Konasana. Now, for some, a, a, a different height is necessary. So. Yeah, I, I can do this, and often, often I do do them on the same height. But for me, it's actually a little easier, this pose, now that I've been doing it for, for some years, to be clear, with a slightly lower height. So if you want to adjust your height, and maybe you need it higher. So if you want to adjust your height, do so. And spread your legs. Now, if you've taken your legs as far apart as they can possibly go, please take them a little closer together, okay? I'm gonna move back a little bit so you can see me a little bit better. Okay, so I'm not asking you to go to the maximum, hands by your hips. Because you get more when you don't. There's more space when you don't. Otherwise, you begin to fight yourself. Your, your body puts on the brakes. You don't want your body to put on the brakes. You want your body to slowly, continually open. Turn the thighs in so that your kneecaps have your strap nearby, by the way. Actually, never mind. You, you won't need the strap. Turn the thighs in so the kneecaps are up and the toes are up. Press the tops of the thighs bo thigh bones down. Don't confuse that with your knees. There, there's an opening behind the knee, right? And we've spoken about this in, in some other classes where, where the, the hamstring moves towards the buttocks. 
the calf moves towards the heel so that there's an opening behind the knee. But that's quite different than forcing the knee down. The thighs go down, there's that opening behind the knee. The flesh of the inner thighs descend, draw from the outer knees to the outer head. And then pressing into the hands, watch those ribs coming forward, lengthen through the side rib. There's a, a tendency, and we do teach it, but we jam the shoulders back and then jam them towards each other. And it, and it feels good, it opens the chest, but I want you to try something different. Move the shoulders as you do this, move the shoulders away from the sides of your neck, it's much more subtle. Move your shoulders away from each other. So that you're not just opening the front of the chest and closing off the back, but there's an open in both the front of the chest and the top of the back. And see if you can allow the breath to touch the front back sides of the body equally. Now don't lose the experience of the legs. Don't lose the experience of the breath. You just worked hard on, on both of those. Take your left hand in between your legs, take your right hand behind you, lift. So we're, we're twisting again, right? Roll the upper arms out to create space for the side ribs. But the shoulders still moving away from each other, shoulders down. You can bend your elbows now. The elbows move away from each other and that helps draw the shoulders away from each other. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Not leaning with the head, but working on the body. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. You can even, if you'd like, stay here, or you can take your left hand on the outside of your thigh. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn. Observe the breath in this twist. And see if you can allow the breath to touch the front back sides of the body. To be clear, front, back, and sides. Not just the front side, back side, but front, back, and sides. Now maintain the lift, inhale, exhale, come to center. Maintain that lift, side rib spine, right hand in, inside, left hand behind you. Inhale, lifting, press the thighs down as you lift up, lengthen the groins, compact the hips. Exhale, turn. So you can bend your elbows, lead with the heart, not the head. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turn. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turn. If you'd like, you can take your right hand on the outside of your thigh. But if, if you feel that's too compressing or it's not optimal today, right? We're not looking for maximum, we look for optimal, then you keep your hand in between. And you're lifting, exhale, turning, bend those elbows, shoulders away from each other. Observe the breath. And then allow the breath to touch the front, back, and sides of the body. Maintain the lift, inhale, exhale, come to center, hands by your hips. And take hold of the inside of your knees, both of them. Lift straight up, hold behind one knee, draw the flesh towards the buttock, straighten the leg. Other knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, straighten the leg, hands by your hips, Dandasana. We'll just, it's going to be just a moment. And release. All right, everybody come stand up. Feet either together or if hip distance apart is, is more comfortable for you, then that's fine. Tadasana.
And actually, just let the arms go for a moment. Don't worry about the arm. Because often we come into Tadasana to, to, to and, and we focus on the arms and we're not even see, feeling what the, what the legs are doing. So just let the arms completely relax. Balance evenly on the feet. And picture three, three not just picture, but feel, experience. Uh, three points on each foot. The balls are the big toes, the center heels, and the outer foot bone. The outer foot bone is about halfway between the pinky toe and the outer heel. That outer foot bone. So six points total, three on each foot. Balance evenly. Don't worry about the arms yet, right? The, the instinct is to work the arms. Let the arms go. And press into those six points of the foot. Evenly. And when you don't quite get it evenly, don't worry, you're not doing anything wrong. You get, you get you know, three points even four, or maybe five, and then maybe a glimpse of that six, and then it, it goes away. But keep going after it. Have the understanding. And notice how just that, that action or, or attempt of the experience of balancing on those six points, and then pressing those six points evenly into the floor how that changes the breath, changes the mind. Press the thighs back, lengthen from the inner knees up towards the lower abdomen. Draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. So we've just worked the legs, notice, experience. How does that affect the body? Obviously we've worked the legs, but how does that affect other places in the body? I actually feel it in my, right above my lower back and other places too. My breath is completely different. What is it for you? And I can notice when I, when I wobble because we, really can't get those six points at all times. So there's a wobbling that it changes where I feel it in my body. So I'm trying to lead you to a place where you can do the self-study, self-discovery that's necessary for you to experience yoga. The physical actions aren't yoga. The physical actions only can bring you to the door of yoga. And while you don't have to have the same experiences that I'm having, I want to prompt you so that you can do that, that, that inward observation so that perhaps that door to yoga can open for you. Take the front bottom ribs towards the back body, top of the buttocks down. Find a lengthening from the hips to the armpits, not just by pushing the ribs forward, because that won't create more distance. It feels more open in the chest, yes, but it doesn't create more distance. You have to keep the front bottom ribs into the body and that then begins to create more distance. Millimeters, I mean by more distance. Now allow gravity to take hold of the shoulders. We're not, I didn't say straighten the arms yet. We'll get there in a moment. But keeping the lift of the side rib, don't lose that, right? So then we take the shoulders down and we drop in the torso. Keep that, that, that lifting through the torso but now simply allow gravity to take hold of the shoulders. And from there, begin to straighten the elbows, extend through the hands. Soften the face. Are you still pressing through the feet? Are, you still, are the legs still doing their job? And what's the experience of the body? experience of the breath, the experience of the mind. And can ha you have the breath touch the front, back, and sides of the body equally. And 
I'm going to teach you Trikonasana, triangle pose. Take your fingertips up by your chest, bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. Take the wide stance. I'm so happy to have my regular yoga mat back. I forgot to bring my yoga mat here to the studio the other day. And when you have the mat you love, it's a great experience. Drop the shoulders. Extend through the arms, thighs back, outer knees to outer hips, ribs in. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. Take your front heel in line with your back arch. Take the back thigh back to press the back heel. Turn the front thigh out. And as you turn the front thigh out, press through the ball of the big toe and lift your outer knee to outer hip, both outer knees to outer hips. Inhale, exhale, take your right hand down, left arm up. And just observe, won't be here that long right now. I want you to observe the quality of the body, the breath and the mind. And then reach up, pull yourself up and out, parallel your feet, right foot and left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch, press the outer arm of your back heel, turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Front ribs towards the back body. Inhale. Exhale, come down. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Compact those hips together. That back thigh goes back. Press the back heel. Front thigh turning out. Press the ball of the big toe. And then lifting both outer knees to outer hips. Extend the arms away from each other. And observe the body, the mind, breath. Pull yourself up and out, parallel your feet, jump or step your feet together. One more time, fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step. Left foot in, right leg out. Back thigh back, press the back heel, front thigh out. So do those together, take the back thigh back, turn the front thigh out. Press the back heel, press the ball of the big toe. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Extend the arms. Inhale, exhale, come down. Take your left hand on your hip. Back thigh back, press the back heel. Turn the front thigh out, press the ball of the big toe. Lift both outer knees to outer hips. Observe the body. Observe the breath, observe the mind. Can you allow the breath now to touch the front, back and sides of the body equally? Where is it stuck here? Because you've moved the body into a certain position. So what do you need to unstick to allow the breath to touch the front back sides of the body equally? For me, most of the breath was going into the chest. So I had to adjust in the back. I had to take the top of the buttocks away from my shoulders to open up the back part of the body. That was what I had to do. What do you have to do? And then maintaining this awareness of the breath, extend the arm up, send the left arm up, but still have the breath touch the front back sides of the body equally. Pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Take your, keep your feet wide. Take your hands on your hips. Take a breath. Extend the arms, right foot in, left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. Take the back thigh back, press the back heel. Then the front thigh out, press the ball of the big toe. Lift both outer knees to outer hips. 
Watch those ribs puffing forward. The ribs stay into the body. Exhale, come down. Take your right hand on your hip. Keep the back thigh pressing back. Press the back heel. Turn the front thigh out. Press the ball of the big toe with both outer knees to outer hips. Now first become a witness to the body, breath, and mind. And then we're working steadily with the breath today. Can you allow the breath, notice where it's stuck, and allow it to touch the front back sides of your body equally. And you may have to adjust to do that. Where do you need to open to do that? Where do you need to bring awareness to do that? And how does that awareness of the breath affect the mind now? Well, how does it affect the body and the mind? How does this work with the breath affect the body and the mind? And then extend your arm up and continue the breath touching front back sides of your body. And reach up, pull yourself up and out, parallel your feet, jump or step your feet together. Tadasana, press through the six points of your feet. Thighs back, the flesh of the inner thighs moving back. Lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, compacting the hips together, still pressing down equally through those six points of your feet. Right through on each foot, the balls of the big toes, center heels, outer foot bones. Lengthening through the side ribs. Shoulders down, extending through the arms. Soft face, allowing the breath, not forcing the breath, but seeing where the breath doesn't touch, allowing the breath to touch all parts. That means you have to go inside with your mind and open parts of your body. Like opening doors and maybe some of the doors are, are the kind that, that, that you, you have a hinge, you pull open and close. Other places, you might have to pull apart a little bit. But how can you use your mind differently to open up the parts of your body that are, are blocked, clogged, to allow the breath to flow? Virabhadrasana two, warrior pose two. Fingertips up, bend your legs, jump for step, your feet wide. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. Same with the legs. Press the back heel, uh, press the back thigh back, press the back heel. Turn the front thigh out, press the ball of the big toe, lift both outer knees to outer hips. Reach with the back arm, inhale, exhale, bend the front leg into that 90 degree angle. Gaze over those front fingertips. Observe body, breath, mind. Reach with your back arm, come up, parallel your feet, over to the other side, right foot and left leg out, front heel in line with your back arch. Press that back heel, turn the front thigh out. Lift both outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips together. Keep pressing that back heel, exhale, bend the leg. Gaze over your front fingertips. That front leg, the knees over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Drop the shoulders, hold the arms up from the armpits. Observe your pose. Reaching through your back arm, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, and jump or step your feet together. One more time, fingertips up, bend your legs. Jump or step, drop the shoulders. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. You know, take your hands on your hips. Take your hands on your hips, everybody. So back thigh back, press the back heel. Turn the front thigh out, press the ball of the big toe. Lift both outer knees to outer hips. Ensure that the torso 
that can even see mine, it's beginning to turn towards that front leg. So turn the torso so it's parallel to the front and back walls. So towards the back leg. But if you do that, that back thigh wants to turn in. So the back thigh goes back, the torso turns towards the back leg as the front thigh turns out. Now press the back heel as you bend the front leg. Keep equal weight on your front and back heels. Even though you're going towards the right leg, you have to keep that awareness on the back leg. So front leg is bent, 90 degree angle. Back thigh back, press the back heel. Ensure that the front knee is over your ankle. The buttock comes forward. Now observe the body, breath and mind. Observe the breath, especially, and allow the breath to touch the front back sides of the body. Maintaining that awareness of the breath, extend the arms, gaze over your front fingertips, allow your breath to touch the front back sides of your body. And notice how this awareness of the breath affects the body and the mind. And then reach through your back arm, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, take your hands on your head. Turn your right foot in, turn your left leg out. Take your front heel in line with your back arch. Keep that back thigh going back to press the back heel. Keep the front thigh turned out with the outer knee to the outer hip. Press the butt, ball of the big toes. You lift your outer knees to your outer hips. And again, your torso has to go towards the back leg as you turn the front thigh out. Exhaling, bend the front leg. Equal weight on each of your heels, spine, Perpendicular to the floor, the spine doesn't lean over the front leg. Take the back thigh back, pressing into the back heel. Bent leg, knee over your ankle, the buttock comes forward. So the left buttock comes forward, the right thigh goes back. Allow the breath to touch the front, back, and sides of your body equally. Ensure that your torso is turned towards that back leg. Really, I mean, because it turns towards the front leg, it's parallel to the front and back walls. Breath touching front, back, and sides of your body equally. And then extend the arms, gaze over the front fingertips, still ensuring that the breath touches front, back, sides evenly. Reach through your back arm, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Pressing through the six points of your feet. Doing the work of the legs, thighs back, lengthening the groins, compacting the hips, lengthening through the side ribs. The shoulders move away from each other. Open up the chest, yes, but open up the top of the back as well. And allow the breath to touch the front, back, and sides of your body. Fingertips up. Bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. Virabhadrasana one, warrior pose one. Rotate your arms so they face the ceiling. Watch those ribs, they immediately begin to stick forward. So draw the ribs into the body, extend your arms up. If that's difficult to keep your arms up, then you either take them to the sides, hands on your hips, okay? Depends on your, if you're going through any shoulder issues. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out, but now we have to turn our hips and torso towards the side of the room. So lift up your back heel, turn, your hips, torso to the side of the room, place your back heel down again. Pressing into the back heel, lift your outer knees to outer hips. Now reach up with your arms and bend your front leg. 
Either look straight ahead. If you have lift in the side ribs and flexibility in your neck, you can look up. And then reaching up, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet over to the other side. Right foot in, left leg out. Pick up your back heel. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, right foot in, left leg out. Pick up your back heel, turn your hips and torso, place the back heel down. Now reach up with your arms, bend your front leg. Keep that right hip moving forward. Knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Head either looking straight ahead or gazing up, depending on the lift of your side ribs and the flexibility of your neck. Observe your body, breath, mind. Then reaching up with your arms, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, arms out to the sides, and jump your step your feet together. I know we don't always do it with the arms up the whole time, huh? But that's the traditional pose. All right, one more time. Fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. And I am still in a good mood, so you can take your hands on your hips. We're going a little differently this time. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. Pick up your back heel, take that left hip forward. Square those hips and then place that heel back down. Press the back heel, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Take the tailbone forward. Watch these front ribs. They do tend to push forward. So draw the front bottom ribs towards the back body, top of the buttocks down, tailbone in. Press that back heel. Inhale on your exhalation, bend your front leg. Knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Again, top of the buttocks down, ribs into the body. Take the left hip forward, left ribs forward. Observe the body, breath and mind. And then begin to cultivate the breath by ensuring that it touches front, back, and sides of the body. And then maintaining that awareness of breath, arms forward, arms up, head either forward or head up, ensure that the breath still touches front, back, and sides of the body. And as the breath touches front, back, and sides of the body, observe the effects on the body and mind. And then reach through your arms, straighten your legs, parallel your feet, arms up to the side, hands on hips. And of course, if it's hard to bring your arms up, you just keep your hands on your hips the whole time. But you can take them up and then bring them back down when they get tired. Not a problem. Right foot in, left leg out. Pick up your back heel, take your right hip forward, right ribs forward, place that heel back down. Pressing the back heel, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Take the front bottom ribs back. When you bend the leg, the front bottom ribs are gonna come forward, the top of the buttocks, is going to come up. So I want you to start here, take your front bottom ribs back, top of the buttocks down, tailbone in. Then exhale, bend that front leg, knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Notice, did your front bottom ribs go forward, top of the buttocks up? Mine did. And I'm going to readjust. Pressing that back heel. Outer knees to outer hips still, lengthening into the groin still. And then let the breath touch the front, back, and sides of the body equally. And then maintaining that awareness of the breath, extend your arms forward, arms up. Gaze either forward or up, depending on your side ribs and your neck. Ensure that the breath touches the front, back, and sides of your body. And notice how that awareness of breath changes the body, affects the body, affects the mind.
Reach through the arms, straighten your front leg. Parallel your feet, arms out to the side. Jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Press through the six points of your feet, thighs back. Lengthen the groins, lengthen the side ribs, lengthen the groins of the arms. Have the breath touch the front, back, and sides of the body. And release. All right, take a, take a blanket. We're doing Setu Bandha. We did this in the last couple of classes. So I want you to have a blanket for your shoulders. So take a blanket or towel or anything, fold it in half like this. And this will be for your shoulders. So your head will be on your mat, shoulders will be on the blanket. And then you can either take a block, if you don't have a block, then take some, take a, you know, some blankets can go under you, pillows, cushions, anything. And you're going to pick the height. So if you know how to get in, because I've gone through this in detail in the last couple of classes, you can get in, but otherwise watch how I get in. Shoulders on the blanket, head on the floor. There are three heights to the block. Your choice today. Lift the buttocks up. You can place the block at the low height, at the medium height, at the high height. But remember this part, as you come up, right? So, so if you haven't seen this, as you come up, when you come down, don't collapse the chest. So this is not what I want you to do, where the whole torso follows. Instead, keep that chest lifted, and then just take the buttocks down. And that's whether you're on the high height or the medium height, medium height. You keep the chest lifted, just take the buttocks down. And then you'll straighten your legs. Okay. So, so shoulders on the blanket, take your height, take your block, head on the floor, lift up. And as you lift up, keep the torso lifted, just take the buttocks down and straighten your legs. If straightening your legs causes tenderness in your lower back, you raise your feet. Take some blankets, pillows underneath your, your heels. It can also help to really press the thighs down, take the top of the buttocks towards your heels, take the tailbone towards the ceiling, that adjusts the lower back. And if none of that works, then sure, you can be here, bend your legs, no problem. Not a problem at all. Turn the thighs in, press the thigh bones down. Lengthen from the top of the thighs through the inner knee, through the inner heel, and lengthen from the top of the thighs towards the lower abdomen, even over the chest. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Now watch those ribs. The ribs tend to puff up, so draw the front bottom ribs towards the back body, allowing for more space through the side ribs, the softened diaphragm, more space through the side ribs. Soften your throat. Your eyes can be opened or closed. Your arms can either be out by your sides like Shavasana or you can do those cactus arms. Whatever works for you today. Observe the body, the breath, and the mind. Notice where the breath isn't touching. And can you open up those spaces inside of you to allow the breath to touch without giving up in the body, without, you know, losing what you did in the legs, pressing the thighs down, top of the buttocks towards your heels, all of that. We don't want to give up what we created in the body. We, we worked hard to create this container. But having created the container, we want to see what is still stuck.
And can you bring awareness to that place is open those doors in the body, open those blockages in the body and allow the breath in. And as you do so, allow the breath to touch the front, back and sides of your body equally, even though it's the front side that is completely open, completely exposed. Can you still bring that awareness to the back and sides of the body? And as you bring this awareness to the breath, front, back, and sides of the body, can you re-witness the body and mind to notice any effects? As your mind wanders, come back and ensure that your breath touches the front, back, and sides of the body equally. And everybody bend your legs. Keep your block or your lift where it is. Lift your buttocks up, take your buttocks down back onto the lift. Lift your buttocks up just about an inch, then take your buttocks back down. And lift your buttocks up, remove your lift, come down from the top of your spine to the base of your spine. Sit bones towards your heels. Take a few breaths here, observing. Without controlling the breath, just watching. And pick a side, extend your arm past your ear, roll to that side and push to come up. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. You can use the floor, the blocks, the chair, anything you have. Right, so if you're on the floor, pressing down through the balls of the first finger and thumb. If you're on your chair, pressing down through the ball of the first finger and thumb, rotate the upper arms out. Extend through the arms, turn your toes under, straighten your legs, inhale, exhale, come into downward facing dog, thighs back, chest towards your thighs. Lengthen the groins of the legs and the arms. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips, draw the outer elbows to the shoulders. Press your outer heels down, lift your outer hips up. Skull released and relaxed. Observe the breath. Where is it touching? Now ensure the breath touches the front, back, and sides of the body equally. Having adjusted the breath, observe the effects on the body and the mind. And then bend your leg, come into child's pose. If child's pose is difficult, just come into Tadasana. Have your head supported. So that can be on the floor. That can be on a block. But have that head supported. 
Rest the skull and allow the breath to touch the front, back, and sides of the body equally. And take your hands underneath your shoulders, push to come up and set yourself up for Shavasana. So you can take a blanket under your head, either a flat one, like this, folded one, depending on your neck. Just lie back for a moment and bend your legs into your chest. Take that blanket so that it touches your shoulders, supports your seventh cervical, and Bend your legs into your chest. Just take a moment here, noticing. Noticing the body, noticing the breath, noticing the mind. As you hold yourself, really give yourself a hug. Say something kind to yourself. Nurturing to yourself, acknowledge your goodness, your love, your true splendor, as it says in the Yoga Sutras. Bathe in your own true splendor. On your inhalation, take your feet to the floor, scoop the flesh of the buttocks towards the heels, straighten your legs one at a time, let your legs go, find a comfortable space for your arms, if your lower back aches at all, you can take a, a rolled blanket or a bolster underneath your knees, or you can always take your calves on the chair. And that also eases the lower back. So this one is fine as well. So adjust as you need to for today. And let go. Surrender to the Mother Earth below you. You've had to support yourself throughout the class. Now can you give up that support and control and allow the Mother Earth below you to support you? Let her hold you. And that's a practice in itself. Giving up control and accepting support. And you are supported. Observe the body, observe the breath, observe the mind. And without taking control, without seeking to force anything, just allow for the breath to touch the front back sides of the body equally. 
If that takes a lot of effort to do, then don't do it. Now is not the time for effort. But if with just awareness, you can bring awareness to the breath and body in such a way that you can guide the breath or open the breath or open, let me rephrase, open the body to allow the breath to touch the front back sides of the body. That comes to you. Then practice with this. Now begin to deepen the inhalation and lengthen the exhalation. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor your knees together, feet apart, take your hands onto your abdomen or onto your chest. Let the healing energy of your hands penetrate your body, pierce through your layers and heal whatever it is you may need healing with today. When you feel ready, pick a side, extend your arm past your ear, roll to the side. When you feel ready, take your top hand, place it on the floor in front of your heart, turn your torso towards the floor first, then push to come up. Come up chest first, head last. Come up to sitting. Bring your palms together, thumbs at your chest, broaden across the collarbone. Broaden across the top of the back as well. Draw your eyes back and down to gaze at your heart. Gently turn the corners of your lips up. Allow the breath to touch the front back sides of your body. And observe your practice. Observe the effects of your practice. What's different, what's changed? Let's close our practice together by chanting one collective home. Deep inhalation. Oh. Can you let your eyes open? Big smile. 
Namaste. Bow to the divine within you.